Changing your relationship with alcohol can be a really difficult step to make. Quite simply because we quite often don't admit how toxic that relationship has become. If you clicked on this video, you've seen the title, you've seen the thumbnail, there's probably two reasons for that. One, you're interested in how I'm doing and you want to get an update from me in my life in general. Or two, you're interested in your own relationship with alcohol and more importantly, changing it to a more positive one. My name is Alex, this is A Happy Change. It's brilliant to see you back. And if this is your first time here, welcome, it's great to see you. Even if you're not considering quitting alcohol, it is without a doubt the biggest positive step I have changed in improving my mental health. Absolutely. So regardless of whether or not you're thinking about changing your relationship with alcohol, just watch this video anyway. If you can change your relationship with alcohol 1% to the positive, it's just gonna lead you on a different path. My mental state has improved significantly since I achieved what I would class as sobriety, although it is with a slight caveat that if I want to have an alcoholic drink from time to time, I can do. I never thought I'd be in this position. So if you want to change your mental health for the better, please watch this video anyway, even if you're not watching it right now. Like, yeah, I've got a drinking problem. Maybe you can control your drinking. Watch this video, change your relationship for the better. I've briefly tackled this topic before in a couple of videos, one talking about an audio book that helps sobriety and another talking about the effect of alcohol and sertraline together. So if either of those things interest you more, go check out those videos. I'll put the links up at the top. This video is about the long term change. So the thing that has actually reprogrammed my head. The idea before was always to achieve sobriety, cut booze out completely. What this has done is changed my relationship with alcohol, which actually for me is more healthy. It means that if I want to enjoy an alcoholic drink, I can do, but I don't have any cravings for it. And I don't have any like emotional anchor or recovery anchor attached to drinking alcohol. So alcohol has stopped becoming the thing that I turn to when I've had a rough day, when I've had a stressful moment, when I've been in a trigger situation. Um, it isn't necessarily that I'll go to the supermarket and look for a bottle of rum. My relationship has changed and that for me is more healthy. I'm not kind of like putting things in the closet and hiding it and pretending alcohol doesn't exist. I don't want any part, anything to do with it. I've got to a point that I didn't think I would ever get to, which is that 90% of the time, I won't think about drinking alcohol. But if I go to the pub or go for a meal or something like that, I'm in a position where I can enjoy a pint. It's a good position to be in. So briefly, my own relationship with alcohol, it was toxic and I pretended it wasn't. And that went on for 20 odd years. So probably from being 15 to, what, 38 now, my relationship with alcohol has been one where the alcohol was in control, it wasn't me. Um, I was very quickly someone that could drink a lot of alcohol without feeling too many negative effects. So I wouldn't necessarily get like wasted, drunk, falling over, embarrassing or anything like that. But it would be something that I would regret the next day. The challenge of being someone like that is you can pack a lot of booze away, not necessarily feel the negative effects of being particularly drunk, but your body is still taking a hit, like you're still really screwing up your liver. Also, the side effect was my mental health suffered significantly because of alcohol. So my anxiety was at an all time high during drinking alcohol, but the next day particularly, not necessarily because I would do something embarrassing, but because all of those things that I was scared about, like being a rubbish dad or uh, being unhealthy, they would now emerge from sobering up, if you like. I would suddenly think, God, I'm getting too old for this. Why am I doing this to my body? And I would be stuck in this guilt cycle. I'd be worried that I'd be groggy and tired. So I'd be disconnected from my relationship with my child. All of those things happen. So it might be that those things resonate with you. It might be that you just recognize that you drink too much and you want to change it. So I tried multiple ways to sober up over the years. And I'm talking, you know, 10, 15 years. I recognized that alcohol wasn't a good thing for my mental health when I was in university. That was 20 years ago. That's how long it's taken me to change. So don't feel guilt if you're in that same position where you're thinking, I should have made this change yesterday. Like make the change today, that's fine. That's all you can do right now. You can't go back in time. Make the positive change you wanna make right now. 
every time I changed the way to become sober, I would slip back into old habits. So cutting out booze completely, great. Month or two, I would be completely sober. I wouldn't need to worry about drink. And then a trigger situation or Christmas or something would happen that would mean, do you know what, I'll just have a drink. And I hadn't rewired my brain. So what that meant was one pint would lead to two pints, to three pints, to four pints, to five pints, to six pints, or a shot of rum or a rum and Coke would lead to a half a bottle of rum or well, I may as well finish the bottle of rum over the weekend now. Those sorts of things would happen to me. I hadn't rewired my own relationship with booze until a couple of months ago. And that's what this video is about. So deep down, I'd always wanted to not just cut out booze, but like change my relationship. I just didn't think it was possible. I thought for me, it was either be an alcoholic. And I genuinely perceived that, you know, I would be like 60, 70, uh, dying of liver failure. Like this is, the, this that's my trajectory. That's the direction I thought I was gonna go is like, I would be like alone in a nursing home, boozed up, I would have liver issues and dementia brought on by alcoholism. And that gave me a lot of stress. It gave me a lot of anxiety, obviously. However, I recognize that alcohol has a place in like social dynamics. It has a place in, um, it's enjoyable. It's nice to have a drink. So I didn't want to necessarily go sober. In fact, when I had gone sober, completely sober, zero alcohol, I'd slipped back into those bad habits relatively quickly within a month or two. I wanted something that was a permanent rewiring of my brain and it happened in a way that was quite unexpected. Dead simple. Rather than kind of swapping my rum and coke for an orange juice, which is what I was doing, rather than, you know, not buying a, a lager and instead having a glass of Dr Pepper or something like that, which didn't work, it wasn't sustainable. One day after a particularly tricky time, a couple of months ago, I was in the supermarket and I was walking down the aisle and I was going to do what I normally do, which is probably buy a couple, uh, you know, a bottle of rum or, a, you know, a, a, a pack of, a, you know, cans of beer. And for some reason, perhaps on like a, a sale shelf, I was attracted to the like low, no alcohol area. And it was sort of like an epiphany moment. I'd always seen people buying these things and thought, you're an idiot, like either drink or don't drink. Like if you don't want to drink alcohol, just stop. And that was my way of like pretending that I could do it if I wanted to. Like I'll just stop drinking alcohol, knowing deep down I can't. I can't just swap alcohol for soft drinks. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to try it. Rather than doing what I normally do, yes, I'm stressed. Yes, I'm having a bad day. But rather than buying a bottle of rum today, I'm going to buy a four pack of no alcohol beer. Got them, put them in the fridge. And that night I thought, right, I fancy a beer. Opened the fridge, grabbed a beer, took out a nice cold can, pulled the ring pull, hit that crackle and the fizz, put it into a glass and had a sip. And I realized in that moment, it wasn't the alcohol content that I loved. It wasn't the alcohol content that I craved. It was that moment, it was that ritual of opening the fridge or the cupboard or wherever you keep your booze, hopefully in the fridge, it's nice or cold. Getting a can, getting a bottle, whatever it might be, opening it, pouring a glass. That was the moment, like I felt my body react. I felt my body relax and I recognized, hold on a second, I'm not addicted to being drunk. I'm addicted to the ritual of drinking. And you might be watching this now, you might be ready to switch this video off and think you're an absolute donut, Alex. I wanna be sober. However, these low alcohol beers have got such a small amount of alcohol in them. Like you may as well be eating a banana. That's how drunk you're gonna get. In fact, I was just looking at the packet of one of them and it says like you need 42 non-alcoholic rum and Cokes to get the same alcohol volume as one alcoholic rum and coke. 42, right, you're not gonna do that in a night, are you? So here I am, I'm stood in my kitchen and I'm thinking to myself, I've been getting this wrong, I've been doing this from the wrong angle. Like, I can enjoy this beer, I get the same level of satisfaction as I would from drinking an alcoholic beer. And I always thought it was the, the alcohol that made me relax. I always thought it was the 
the booze that would let me sleep. I always thought it was the, um, you know, that that strong spirits or whatever would just clear my brain and let me zone out. But once I cracked it and heard that noise and filled that glass and took a sip and felt the crispness, I was like, it's the ritual. So over the last two months, I've been very cautious to keep my fridge stocked with non-alcoholic alternatives. So that's non-alcoholic beer, lager, rum, gin, anything that I would normally drink, I'll put in there. And it means that when I feel like I want a beer, I don't open the fridge and I'm faced with pomegranate juice and think, well, that's not a replacement, so I'll go to the off-license and grab some booze. I open a can of beer. And the side effect is that I've gone from someone who would drink every single night, every single night. And, and my relationship with booze was that I, couldn't, I could never just have one drink. You know, if I went to the pub for a pint after work, I would have that pint and then get come home and keep drinking. Like I just couldn't, I couldn't stop at one. It had to be something that I sustained. Whereas my relationship with, with non-alcoholic lager, and I did honestly didn't think I would ever be in this position. My relationship with non-alcoholic lager is that I can have one or two and feel satisfied. I can feel relaxed. I can watch a film. Drink a can, open a bottle of gin and gin and tonic, non-alcoholic gin and tonic, and get the same level of satisfaction, the same benefit I was getting from booze, but none of the nasty side effects. I don't get back pain because my body isn't struggling to cope and process. I don't wake up exhausted the next day because I've drank too much booze and, and, and struggled to sleep. I wake up refreshed and I get the same level of satisfaction. So I'd gone from really cynical about like non-alcoholic booze to someone that will drink it whenever I want now. Whenever I'm feeling the need for an alcoholic beverage, you know, on a Friday night, I'll have a gin and tonic. It's just got no alcohol in it. What this has also meant is that when I'm out eating in a restaurant or if I go to the pub, I can say, have you got any non-alcoholic alternatives? And they always do. So I can have a nice glass of non-alcoholic beer with my meal. I guess most importantly for me is I took a gamble. And one time I got an alcoholic pint risky, right? And I had it and I was like, this is nice. I enjoyed it. And when they asked if I wanted another drink, I said, yeah, what's your non-alcoholic beer? And got one of those. Like I just didn't have the need and it was and it was bonkers to me because I'd spent my t two decades of my life needing that second and then needing that third. And I found myself in a position where I could have one alcoholic drink and be happy. Now, the vast majority of time, I don't drink alcohol now. And we're talking two, three months probably. I don't drink alcohol. But from time to time, if I want, to, if I'm at a party and someone offers me a beer, I don't have to be like, oh, I can't do this. I'm going to slip into my old ways. I can go, yeah, thank you. Enjoy it. And then I can switch on to my non-alcoholic alternative. So if you have watched this and you're thinking, man, I really do want to rewire my brain, please try it. Just go today to the supermarket, buy the non-alcoholic version of what you would normally buy. Don't go like, well, I'm not paying that price for something that doesn't have alcohol in. That's not the point. The point is you're buying the ritual. You're not buying alcoholic content. You're buying the ritual that helps you feel good. Okay? So it's like a nice investment. Go and buy a, pack, a four pack of beer or a bottle of non-alcoholic rum or whatever it is that floats your boat. Non-alcoholic wine, even I've not tried that yet. Put it in your fridge and next time you would normally go for a drink, have it. Simple. I'm filming this video at the end of September. That means it's nearly October. Internationally, perhaps, this is the time when people sort of cursorily give up booze. Stop, Stoptober, I think it's called in the UK. Um, so this aligns quite nicely. My aim is that over Stoptober, I'm going to release some non-alcoholic alternative beverage reviews. And it'd be great to get your support with those. It's a slight change from my normal content. But what I want you to think is, this is about lifestyle changes now. So I'm going to put the first review right here for you to watch. 
And if you're looking for the alternatives to booze, alcohol, all of that, I implore you to watch it. This was a happy change, a sober happy change. My name is Alex. Peace.